Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a build documentation of the DBE Metal Oxide Fuzz. This is a really neat fuzz circuit. Uh, if you haven't been able to tell by now, I am pretty much addicted to fuzz faces, so I wanted to document this build. What I have done here is I have recorded video of every moment of the build of this pedal. and We're going to watch it through, it sped up, and I'm going to commentate over the build. Hopefully give you guys some input and tips here on, on how I build it. And uh, then at the end we're going to hear a demo. So to start off, I'm drilling the enclosure. This is a 125B enclosure, and uh, it's kind of the standard that I like to go with. And what I'm doing here is I'm using my measuring tape or a ruler you could use as well, and I'm kind of trying to gain some measurements to roughly find some of the equidistant spots. I'm going to do top-mounted jacks and a top-mounted power supply on this one a little, with a little bit of a triangular pattern so they've got room. And then um, I just take, my, I take a marker and I dot the location and then I take a very small pointed drill bit and I drill a hole on that spot. I find that this method is not perfect but it is pretty good and um, you know if you're a little more anal and, and like it to be perfect certainly maybe use a little bit of a different method but this tends to work really well for me now I'm reaming out the holes with a little bit of a larger drill bit and that's what I kind of tend to follow as I start really small and I slowly step my way up and that does a nice job of keeping the holes in the right spot uh, while not causing any problems now the PCB board here is really small um, and the way I mounted the pots is maybe a little bit low, but I wanted to give myself plenty of room for the jacks up at the top, so that's kind of why I decided to uh, make that modification. Um, and then once I get my, uh, my holes drilled with a smaller drill bit, um, and I start doing some test fittings. You can see I've got a pot there that I poke through the hole and, and my jacks, and, and that's basically how I size things. I don't take any measurements like that. I basically just drill the holes until the part that wants to go into it fits. And just something that I try to keep in mind is you can always make the hole bigger, but you can't make the hole smaller. So you just want to be a little cautious about um, you know drilling too big. So there you can see my stepped drill bit. I use that to drill, drill the larger holes um, like the, for the for the foot switch and the power supply, uh, the DC jack, those are the two that I really need it. Um, and the, the step bit is really nice. You can get another step bit that's even goes down to a little bit more of a uh, smaller tip point, and that's probably what I'll do when I need to get another one, just so that you could start with a really small um, hole and then use the step drill bit to go all the way up. So now my holes are all done. Now I like to kind of start to assemble the parts into the pedal. And I find that um, in the past I maybe did it a little bit differently where I would maybe focus on building the, the, the circuit a little bit before that. But I find that starting to get the assembly in is a nice way to make sure that I'm on the right track. So, uh, But now that I'm good there, I'm going to start populating components on the board. Um, I'm starting with the capacitors. Usually I start with the resistors, but you know with this build, is the components are so light. Um, that I, it doesn't really matter. You can see I've got the bill of materials on my phone there, right? Easy to to double check. Um, I think I am using um, these are capacitors that I'm using from my store. I've started to build up a little bit of a parts um, excess, and so uh, just using those. And then we just go ahead and solder. You can see there I've got these these little clip-on third hands, I think is what it's called, to hold the PCB, and that is awesome. Uh, I only just got that recently, but I would highly highly recommend it. Um, so my capacitors are in place. I think one of them is polarized. It's a little bit of a larger one, so it means it's got to go in the correct direction, so pay attention to that. What I'm putting in there was the sockets for the transistors, and what I did is I put them in right side up, because they're these they're kind of flimsy and they're hard to put in, and I basically went under the board and soldered one leg in, and now I flipped it, and you can see I'm so I'm, I'm using that one leg that I soldered while the board was upside down to kind of hold it in place while I solder in the remaining. Uh, so that was kind of a nice little trick to get those tough I, IC sockets or, uh, or transistor sockets in place. I like to use sockets on transistors and ICs just because they're a little more heat sensitive and you may want to swap them out. So now I've got a PCB mount pot going on here. I love these things. They've got a dust cover on the bottom and they mount right into the PCB and they hold the PCB into the enclosure. I will, will I mean I will use these things whenever I possibly can. I think they're really really nice. But for my other pot, I don't have one, so I'm using some solid core wire 
which I soldered to the uh, the pot first, and then I used that to mount it in the enclosure. And because I've got one that's got the solid legs, I feel pretty good about that. So now I'm just um, transitioning all again to the rest of the hardware. I've got some locking washers, and then using these two jacks. Now for my quarter inch jacks, I actually only had stereo, even though I'm only really using both of them as mono jacks. Um, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm moving on. You can see I'm using Eric's, uh, he's got a really, really cool, uh, switching setup. It's, it's a pretty complex one actually, but it's, it's probably the best and most robust electronic in terms of electrical engineering. It's the most robust way to switch your pedal on and off that I've ever seen. And it's, it's actually beyond my understanding. Uh, but I would highly recommend it. I think it works really well and it's easy to work with. And he comes with this with this setup you see here where I've got these wires that I just need to solder in. You send two to the input jack, two to the output jack, hot and ground. And then you send a couple to the board, a couple to the power supply, and you're good to go. It made this build extremely easy. I think this build would be very accessible to a new beginner and would highly, highly recommend. Um, now you can see I'm only using two of the of the leads from the the stereo jack so you're just using the tip for the hot signal and then the sleeve for the ground and then the middle ring is just left ignored uh, you could ground it I think if you would want a typical quarter inch jack would would also ground that middle rug lug which maybe would be a good idea so you don't leave anything hanging but one thing I did notice is these these little orange and white wires they're actually smaller than my clippers which made it kind of tough so the way I got around it is I just actually used like a pocket knife or an X-Acto knife and I just slowly and carefully kind of cut around it and it worked okay um, but definitely would recommend getting a more narrow um, wire stripper in the future when I can. But overall it worked fine. I didn't have any problems to getting it to work. Um, seemed to work just fine. And then, yeah, trying to tuck these wires in on the side, do one last tighten down and then... Um, now I've just got my power wire. So I've got two power wires that'll go to the power supply and then also the wires that'll go to the board. So uh, I took a second to kind of orient myself a little bit and now we're I'm mounting the power. Now this is a fuzz face and it is negative ground, which is pretty great. And so that's, that's the end of the build. So let's go ahead and take a listen now to how it sounds. Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to do a demonstration of the DBE Metal Oxide Fuzz. It's a really cool pedal. Uh, kind of a fuzz face type design, but uh, the, the faux star of the show is a MOSFET in Q2. Now on the fuzz face, what you basically have is an initial gain stage done by a transistor. In this case, we've got a 2N5088. Pretty straightforward silicon transistor with pretty good, moderately high gain acting as a boost, and that is going to boost the signal directly into Q2, your second gain stage. And because you're boosting this this first gain stage at pretty much full blast, the second gain stage goes into crazy fuzz overdriven distortion characteristics. And instead of using a transistor, we're using a, a typical silicon transistor like you would see, or a germanium transistor, uh, like some of the more famous coveted fuzz faces will have, we're using a MOSFET. Now, uh, the build calls for a BS-170. Didn't have one of those in stock, so I'm using a VN-2222 MOSFET. Um, and it actually seems to be sounding just fine and uh, really enjoying this build. It's a super straightforward, just got volume and fuzz. The volume is, or the fuzz is left up all the way, and the volume is set to just a little bit higher than Unity. And uh, loving the sound of this pedal. So let's go ahead and listen to how it sounds. Mm -hmm. 